Welcome back folks to the VIA pinstriping page. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching. Um, today I'm going to be covering three different types of palleting techniques that I have come across over the years. Um, there's, you know, I mainly use one, but I did want to inform everybody of the other two. Um, I did gain some information and insight through a friend of mine named Anthony Monaco aka spaz um, if you could please check out his instagram page at my dog has a beard all over uh, that is all one word uh, he is an amazing artist so please check out spaz anthony monaco's work uh, for helping me out with this video also i will have some links in the description that will send you to amazon if you purchase anything through those links i do get a small commission and it's a great way to help out the page so uh, have a great day and I hope you enjoy the content which should be starting right about now. Okay folks, so this is the first technique which is a technique that I use uh, to palette my brush is uh, I'll have a nice clean brush, all the oil has been cleaned off and it's fairly dry. Um, I'll dip some paint onto the brush and I'll just palette onto a magazine or I'll, I'll, I'll squirt out a nice little puddle of paint um, with a, with a, one of the bottles that I have and as, as needed I reduce with mineral spirits which I can move a little closer so I just barely dip in there just a little dab and I reduce as needed now this is just a method that I picked up on my own um, I'm self-taught through the internet, uh, mostly through a group on Facebook called Pinstripers Garage, uh, which was a great, great uh, deal of information on there. So this is how I learned. And there are some downsides to this method. Uh, wherever you have this magazine, you have to keep coming back to it. Or um, I have seen folks use like a like a little index card and carry around some paint with them and kind of palette like that uh, but for me I always kind of need this to be in a stationary place and I come back to it quite often so if I'm doing a car uh, there is a little downside to using this method in my opinion and so that's ready you know now I do whatever I want with the with the brush if need be, come back, reload. And whatnot. So that is method number one. It is palleting onto a magazine. Um, I do keep my reducer separate from my paint. And I just reduce as need be. All right, so we'll move on to uh, the second method. Okay, folks, so method number two is palleting inside of the cup, which I've seen uh, my friend uh, Dave Letterfly do. He'll put a decent amount of paint in a cup. I think I've seen him, like, fill the cup about halfway. And he just puts a little bit of reducer in there, which I may have put way too much. He's, he's been doing it for so many years that he understands how much reducer to put in. And he'll mix it up real good. And get it the consistency that he wants inside of the cup and as he's working he just carries around the cup with him and what he'll do is he'll dip the brush in the cup and just swipe on the side of the cup now that's something uh, he understands better than I do because this is not a method that I personally use but it seems to work for him very well. Um, from what I understand, I wish I would have learned this method first because you can kind of just carry the paint with you everywhere you go and you don't have to keep coming back. When you need to reload, you just reload with the cup. You know, you get set up to where you always have the cup in your hand. and you just learn how to balance it that way. Uh, it does seem to be a kind of an old sign painter's method of doing things, which I just wish I had learned that way. Unfortunately, uh, I'm a creature of habit, so I still do the magazine thing. 
Um, so that is method number two that is palleting inside of the cup, which I think is a pretty damn good way of doing it. Um, just I did not learn it, unfortunately. And maybe, maybe I could still try it. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so that's method number two. Okay, folks, so method number three. Um, I spoke to my friend Anthony, which I said in the beginning of the video, and what he said he does is he'll he'll get some paint in a cup, right? I'm wearing a glove now because you're going to have to touch the paint physically, and I think he doesn't wear a glove. I don't know. Um, so he'll, he'll load the brush up on a magazine, and he'll dip a little bit in the mineral spirits the way I do. I want to say he's got a little mixture going on with the paint with, I think, a little bit of reducer and some hardener. Usually, if you're going to be working working uh, on the body of a car, you want to add some hardener. Really, if you're going to be working on anything and you want it to last, you want to add some hardener. So he'll do his striping, and then when he feels like uh, the paint is kind of running low, he'll run his fingers through it and kind of reload the brush that way. It's called finger palleting. And I guess he tries his absolute hardest to not touch the surface with his fingers. Now, the, the good thing about using this method is if you're out, like he said, if you're inside of a big rig and you're doing some pinstriping on the inside and you gotta climb in and out, now, in order to reload your brush, if it was me, I would have to come back out to my magazine. All he has to do is swipe it through his fingers, and it kind of brings it back to life. And if he needs to, he said he'll dip a little bit in the reducer and just kind of rerun it through his fingers again. And it seems to be a, clearly a more hands-on method, and uh, I like the idea of it. But I do not like the idea of having paint on my fingers. Because I try to keep things as clean as possible. So that is the third method. It's called finger palleting. And I have seen a lot of folks do it. And there was actually a subscriber that asked me about it. Uh, he wanted to know if it's something that is necessary. Uh, and it is not necessary. But I don't think it's a bad idea. I just think, you know, you're getting chemicals on your fingers. And uh, kind of a bad habit if you start it. I think uh, it's a bad habit to break because gives you easy access to reloading a brush. You know, put a little uh, mineral spirits or high temp reducer or low temp reducer, whatever you're using. And I think it could be just a really good way of feeling what the paint should feel like. Probably not bad, I don't know. I already got paint all over the ferrule. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing with this. But I guess that is the idea of this. Alright, so that's method number three. I hope it helped. Uh, have a good day.